in this video we will see the salient steps of the bang technique or the bent ab interno needle goniectomy it's a very very cost effective way of doing migs the microinvasive glaucoma surgery now we start by removing the crystalline lens in this particular case this gives us a wider anterior chamber and also gives a good visibility of the angle and its structures we will fast forward the steps of the removal of the lens in this particular situation as it is not of much relevance here and it is more important to see the steps of the uh, bang technique now we proceed to remove the crystalline lens once the lens is removed we ensure that when we are doing the side ports or the main incision they should be minimal or no ooze of blood because this oozing blood can get under the the gonio lens and cause loss of visibility or blurring of the vision of the angle or its structures we proceed to insert the or implant the iol inside the eye now having implanted the lens inside now we make sure that the wound is very tight and water tight wounds because we don't want any shallowing of the anterior chamber when we put our gonio lens and put pressure on the eye in order to rotate it in the opposite direction next we instill some myotic to constrict the pupil constriction of this pupil causes better visualization of the angle and its structures this is followed by installation of sodium hyaluronate into the anterior chamber to distend the anterior chamber well enough one more point to be taken care here is that we should not overfill the anterior chamber as it may blanch the angle and its structures and hamper the visualization of the schlem's canals and the trabular trabecular meshwa once we do this now we start tilting the microscope approximately by 30 to 40 degrees away from us and also the head of the patient is turned approximately 45 degrees away from us this approximately gives us 80 to 90 degree of n phase view of the angle and its structures now this is a very very important step if this is not done properly it will hinder our visibility of the trabecular meshwork the scleral spur and the ciliary body it's a very good idea to have somebody hold patient's head away from the surgeon so that there is an angle of approximately 80 to 90 degrees between the microscope and the patient now in case this is done properly we will get an n phase view of the trabecular meshwork the scleral spur or the ciliary body but if the rotation of the head or the microscope tilt is not adequate we will see the collapse of all these three structures in the angle and they will appear to be collapsed and thus separation or visualization of each one of them separately will become tricky so this is a very very important step to have a microscope which can be tilted and also have an assistant which can turn the patient's head away from you having done the procedure of microscope tilting and patient's head tilting now we put some sodium hyaluronate on to the cornea while we do this we have to ensure that there are no air bubbles on to the cornea because these air bubbles will cause some blurring or they will obstruct the visualization of the trabecular meshwork and will impede the view of the angles and thus may cause some problems during the procedure of MIGS then we use a 25 gauge bent angle needle this needle tip is bent by approximately 70 to 80 degrees ideally 90 or above can cause some problems so i my preference is to go in for a 70 to 80 degree bent tip of the needle the bent is towards the bevel of the needle now having done that we put the gonio lens on top of the cornea you notice there are some air bubbles there so we relieve the gonio lens and put it again on the cornea this pushes the air bubble away from the field of vision now having done this we proceed to insert the needle through the side port which we had created this has to be started the moment we get the n phase view of the trabecular meshwa once that is done we go in to the trabecular meshwork scoop it or excise it for approximately 2 to 3 o'clock hours or 60 to 90 degrees removal of this trabecular meshwork will ensure the completion of the procedure 
if there is some ooze of blood during this step which is expected it actually means that everything is going on fine if we are not able to visualize these structures properly a lot of times we may end up causing cyclodialysis in these patients so proper visualization of the structures is very very important so here you will see me doing the goniectomy approximately 2 clock hours plus and in the end you will see some ooze of the blood as the process is completed that ooze of blood is ensuring that the trabecular meshwork is open now and then we remove the needle out now all we need to do is go in wash the sodium hyaluronate and make sure that the ooze of the blood has stopped before we close or complete the case you will notice that when we are removing the viscoelastic there is still some ooze coming into the anterior chamber but this is okay this shall stop within a minute or so having done so the procedure is complete there are papers published that this procedure is known to reduce the total iop approximately by 10 to 14 mm in some preliminary papers thank you